Hi, I'm Orion, and I'm presenting our work, Never, Negation in Neural Information Retrieval. This is a joint work with my advisors, Don and Ben, at Johns Hopkins University. So in October 2019, Google Search integrated BERT, and their blog post shows an example that indicates it understands negation. They had the query, parking on a hill with no curb, and their image shows that before BERT, they retrieved a document talking about a curb, while after BERT, they retrieved a document talking about no curb. However, people realized that this wasn't always the case, that BERT could understand negation. In a high-profile tweet in 2021, a Google search showed results for what to do when you had a seizure. It advised the person to give them food and water until they are alert again. However, if you click on the website and look at the full text, you find that the real website says, do not give the person food and water until they are alert again. In the context of a seizure, this is a big deal. I mean, this has real health implications to give this sort of um, misinformation. So the question that we want to answer today is, do information retrieval models understand negation? And so in order to do this, we create a benchmark called NEVER. We want to answer a simple test. If you have a negated query and a non-negated query, you should retrieve different passages, especially if there's negation in the documents. So our idea and motivation is to create two documents that have negation and that has no negation, and then create two queries as well, one that has negation and one that doesn't have negation. And we can just test a very simple ranking to see which one it prefers. So crucially, we designed this to ask annotators to create queries that are only relevant to one of the documents so that one document can be deemed relevant and the other should be irrelevant to the query. Let's look at some examples to make this concrete. We start by taking documents from the Conda QA dataset, which contains documents scraped from the web that contain real-world negation, like this document that contains the negation word, except. They then ask crowd workers to take that negation and affirm it to undo the negation. So in this case, we have document number two, which replaced the word except to the word throughout, affirming the negation. So now we have two documents that are identical except for the negation, and we just need to create the queries that have negation and non-negation. So to do so, we ask crowd workers on Mechanical Turk to annotate queries that are relevant to only one of the two documents. So here we have what countries did not replace nickel, which is only relevant to the first question, which talks about countries that didn't replace nickel. Whereas document number two talks about countries that did replace nickel, and so it is not relevant to the query. So in order to test this, we can then take the query and the two documents and give it to the retrieval model. The retrieval model will then rank them using some score, and we get this ranked list. And in this case, the model correctly ranked document one over document two. So we might say, yay, great, the model understands negation. However, there is a twist here. It turns out the retrieval models often prefer one document over the other in all cases. So if you ask another query here where you ask for the, the undo the negation, so this one should return document two over document one, we find that the model incorrectly also ranks document one above document two, which is incorrect. Thus, we see a simple way that we could test negation in information retrieval models. And we do so through paired accuracy. So the model must rank both queries correctly for us to say it understands negation, because otherwise it could just be preferring one document over the other, and we don't want to give it credit for those situations. So we're going to evaluate a series of models on never using paired accuracy. And if it gets both of these queries right, then we say it understands negation. So let's look at some results in the zero shot case where models were not trained on never. Let's start with a simple baseline, a random baseline. In this case, the random baseline selects to rank either document one or two higher for each query. So it's got a 50% chance of answering correctly for each query, or one half times one half, 
which is one quarter. So any model that correctly understands negation should get a score higher than 25%. Next, let's look at sparse models. We include one more non-neural model, TF-IDF, which matches based on keywords. We see that the performance of TF-IDF is very low at 2% paired accuracy. This is because when we did annotations, we asked annotators to not use any keywords from the document in their query in order to purposefully limit the score of keywords. However, because we only did exact match limitations, some annotators include words like versions, which were not blocked because we only blocked the word version. So because of this, TF-IDF has a pairwise accuracy of 2%. However, even neural sparse models, such as Splayed V2, have about 8% paired accuracy, which is still worse than random. Next, we look at late interaction models, like Colbert V1 and V2. These models embed everything with tokens and then match those tokens using a maxim operator. Despite this, the Colbert models still perform much worse than random, although they do perform better than the sparse methods. Next, we look at bi-encoder models. These models encode query and document separately and then compute a distance similarity between them. These models have score paired accuracy scores between 6 and 11%, indicating that they also do not understand negation being much worse than random. And finally, we have cross-encoder models. These models compute a tension between both query and document and are typically larger and slower than all the other uh, model types. However, it is only these model types that perform above random, with uh, the best models being the most large ones, such as Mono T5, 3 billion, performing the best at 50% paired accuracy. However, it's still interesting to note that some cross encoders, like Rocket QAV2, and some uh, sentence BERT versions, like STSB Roberta, perform worse than random, while most other ones still perform barely above random. However, do these results change when we fine tune these models on NEVER? Here we show results for Colbert V1 after fine tuning on NEVER. We show the absolute score changes compared to the zero shot setting using MRR at 10 for MS Marco and paired accuracy for NEVER in orange. We can see that after training for one epic, NEVER scores go up by 1.5 and MS Marco scores also increase by about half a point. After five epics, we can see that never scores have increased seven points, while MS Marco has only gone down 0.1 point. At 10 epics, we see a 22.7% gain for never, with only a minus one gain, or a minus one loss for MS Marco. And finally, after 20 epics of fine tuning, never has a 30 point gain while MS Marco loses three MRR at 10 points. We can see that thus it's possible to fine tune on never and see much better results in understanding negation while only losing a little bit of, of performance on MS Marco. So why do models do so poorly on negation and the never benchmark? We start by examining the similarity of the embedded versions of the non-negated and the negated queries. If models understood a difference between them, they should have different representations. However, we found that in the zero-shot setting, there is almost no difference between the negated and non-negated documents before fine-tuning. However, after fine-tuning, we find that there starts to become more of a difference. Small changes after one epic, but after five and ten epics, we see a much larger change with there being a larger cosine similarity distance between the negated and non-negated documents. We have a lot more really cool analysis in the paper, including maxim analysis for late interaction style retrievers, where you can see that after fine tuning, Colbert correctly focuses on the negation words in the maxim operator. We also have much more error analysis, as some models prefer the negated document the majority of the time, while some prefer the non-negated, we found that it differs a lot depending on the model. We also have fine-grained dataset statistics, which you can check out in the paper, as well as fine-tuning results on other models, such as Mono T5 and bi-encoders. So in summary, nearly all of retrieval models ignore negation. 
Only cross encoder models produce above random results, and the best one, even after fine tuning, is only at 65% paired accuracy. So there's a long way to go for retrieval models to do well on negation. And finally, incorporating negation into training can significantly improve results without much harm. As most retrieval training just uses MS Marco, there's basically no retrieval or no negation in retrieval models training data. So even incorporating just a little bit of it will really help these models um, to do better on negation. Thanks so much for listening. If you have any questions, please check out the paper or feel free to email me. Thanks.